Hello everyone. Today is another rainy, miserable day here on the property. So it's a good day to be out here in the pole barn trying to get some, at least try to get something done, right? So behind me is my uh, Alice Chalmers tractor and it has been broken for like three weeks. So I finally got my parts in. I'm gonna try to get this fixed up today. So I bought this tractor when I first got the property and I needed, I knew I needed a tractor to clean up the property and do work around here. And I really wanted a, a tractor that had a front end loader. Um, but uh, this tractor also came with a rear blade and it came with a three bottom plow. It came with a hay spear. It came with a, came with a disc to be able to disc the ground up. So it came with, and it came with a bush hog. It came with so many implements um, that I, it was able, it was basically, I was getting kind of everything I needed all at one time, right? But the problem was it's a 1959 tractor, so it's gonna have reliability issues. Um, you know, things gonna break on it, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to learn how to work on it. So uh, that's what I'm gonna be doing today. I'm gonna be trying to, you know, rebuild the carburetor, try to get that, uh, get that running. I think that's where my problem is. I also have an ignition tune-up. So I've got uh, spark plugs and wires, distributor cap, the internals that go in the distributor. I'm gonna try to get that all swapped out as well and, and do a tune-up on it. Um, but, uh, it's amazing how much you, you I use this tractor. I didn't realize it until it finally broke on me and it seems like every little job around here, I need it. Maybe I only need it for 20 minutes, but I need a tractor to lift something or to push something. And uh, so I definitely wanna get this up and running so I can get back to getting stuff done around here. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. So I've got the carburetor off the tractor. I've cleaned it up as best I can. And on the front of the carburetor, it's really hard to see um, when it's on the tractor, plus this was dirty, but this is stamped. And it is stamped with the model number of the carburetor and that'll tell you exactly what type of rebuild kit to get. Well, I couldn't read this previously uh, when it was on the tractor. So I based uh, this rebuild kit that I got here, I based this off the serial number of the tractor. Uh, basically what type of carburetor should have been on the tractor when it was originally made. And now that I've looked at this, um, this model number is a different carburetor. So I think I have the wrong rebuild kit. So um, that means I'll probably end up having to wait for parts again. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna tear this down and get it all torn apart. I'm sure once I get it opened up, I'll, I'll know for sure whether it is a different carburetor or not. So I've laid paper towels down on my bench because this is a woodworking bench. So it's got a bunch of holes in the bench. So I'm hoping not to lose any parts if I lay these paper towels out. Yep. So right there, I think is the telltale sign. You see the float, this is the float that is in here. And then here's the float that I bought for the Zenith style carburetor. You can tell that they're completely different. So I definitely have the wrong parts for this carburetor, but uh, we'll go ahead and we'll still break it down though. So 
So the float seems to not have any liquid in it, but I'm gonna go ahead and submerge this real quick and make sure the float doesn't have any holes. Once I put this underwater, if it bubbles, I'll know this float needs to be replaced. All right. So the float seems to still be good. So now I think, uh, I think I'll just have to get my rebuild kit. So the carburetor kit that I ordered um, was based off of the uh, was based off the serial number, and that brand of carburetor was only used for like the first year or two uh, when they made this tractor, um, and then they switched brands of carburetor. So some point in time in this tractor's life, they have replaced the carburetor and put the newer style on there. So just solely basing it off the tractor serial number didn't work out for me. Um, we'll just have to get the right kit ordered and. Uh, get this put back together. But for now, we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and just do the ignition system, get that all swapped out. So this little piece on the contact that rides on the shaft, this shaft is actually has a cam to it. It has flat spots that you can see and it has high spots. So we gotta make sure it's on top of one of the high spots, which it is. And then we've got to check the gap between here. And to be honest with you, it actually feels like it's about right. It just slides in there. It might be a hair bigger. So 23 thousandths is going in between the contact uh, and it can go smoothly. And 24 thousandths is dragging. So it's touching at 24 and um, it seems to have, so I'm gonna say it's got a 23 thousandths gap and we're shooting for 20 thousandths. So I think that's close enough to run. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, distributor cap back together and get all the spark plugs on. So I'm going to assume that this is the what they call the rotor. Um, that's an assumption. If I'm calling that wrong, just uh, correct me in the comments down below. But you can see that this rotor and the new one I got look totally, I mean, they're similar, but the very end is different. So um, I'm going to try the new one out. If it doesn't work, I'm going to put this one back in. So 
So I got all the ignition system uh, parts changed out and I wasn't real happy with the spark plug wires. Um, two of them ended up being too short. So the one going to the coil was too short and then the one going back to the, the far back cylinder was too short. So I had to use the old wires on those two. And uh, I did get all those little parts in the distributor uh, changed out. Not really sure whether I, that was necessary or not, but I did it. So I am gonna keep all my all the parts that I took out of the distributor, the old distributor cap, I'll keep all that. And that may come in handy later if I run into any issues. So now I just gotta go back inside and order the right carburetor kit. And then we'll probably be back out here in a week and hopefully we'll get this running. So there was different levels of rebuild kits. There's kind of like a real basic one, kind of like a normal rebuild kit, and then like a premium. And I ended up buying the premium. It had like all the parts for the carburetor in it. So it has like the little flappers and everything that go in this carburetor. And this may be a little extensive. I probably didn't have to change all these parts out, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot. See if we can just get everything completely rebuilt. And it does have some like instructions in here. It looks like a little, at least a parts diagram. And hopefully it has um, some instructions on how to set uh, the jets because there's a couple of like basically they're like little needle valves that help spray the gasoline in and there's two of those on here Hopefully it'll explain on how I'm supposed to set those because I think normally you screw them down all the way And then you have to back them off so many turns. So hopefully that's in the documentation Hopefully hopefully everything's clear enough for me to be able to swap this out without having any questions So I'm not a carburetor expert by any means. I have taken two or three of these apart before um, so I'm just kind of learning and hopefully I get this all changed out and it'll run when I'm done. So I'm going to go ahead and start on the top half and start changing out all these parts. So you can see here's the parts diagram on this side, tells you how to disassemble it. And then on the other side, basically tells you how to clean it, reassemble it, and then it tells you how to adjust the different needle valves and how to adjust the float. So hopefully I can uh, get this all put together, no problem. Sucker broke. Oh, I'm in trouble now. So right here, this little bitty jet right there is the idle jet. That's what it's called. Probably helps hold the idle. I was putting that in there and it broke. There's these little, this has two little pieces. Let me see if I can grab them. Probably won't be able to see them in my hand. There's two little pieces here. That was the sides where you put your screwdriver in and they broke off. Since that uh, jet broke off, I don't know if I got it in there all the way and I'm not real happy that it ended up doing that. So I'm gonna try to get that out. This may be a mistake, but what I have is I have, this is an easy out. It's a, it's a reverse drill bit on one end. It's an easy out on the other. I'm gonna see if I can get this jet back out. I'm going to try to put the old one back in. Well, this carburetor may never run. And there it is. I got it out. Thank goodness. The bad thing about that, now I've got little metal shavings. So I've taken the other jet out just so I can make sure to clean all the shavings out of it. All right, so we're gonna try to put the original idle jet back in. I'm gonna use a smaller screwdriver. So here's our float assembly that goes in the carburetor. And then this here, this is the old float valve right here. You can see it. 
Now you can see that the new float valve looks a little bit differently and it actually came with a spring. So the way to put this together, and I actually had to watch some videos to figure this out, is this spring, it hangs from the float. I don't know if you can see that, but I got it kind of hanging here in the, the corner of the float. And then the little loop here that's on the bottom, we're gonna take the top of this valve and slide it down in there. And then you see how the float valve is now attached to the float. So when the float moves up and down, it'll guarantee that the valve moves up and down with it. And that's how you gotta put it in the carburetor, just like, just like so. So we'll put our gasket on here. So we've got our float with our valve hanging from it. We're just gonna set the valve down in the hole just like so, and then get this pin through the float. And now when this float moves up and down, you can see that spring's gonna pull that valve up and down. So one thing I should have put in here before I put the float on is I should have put this Venturi tube on there. So here, I think that's what they call it. It's a Venturi tube, and it is actually smaller on one side and bigger on the other. So. The, on this carburetor, the big side is going to go toward the top. So I've just got to lift this gasket up and slide it down in that hole right there. So now the top part is assembled and ready, uh, ready to go. Definitely being more careful after breaking that first jet. So now that I've got all the parts assembled, I'm gonna take the, the top half and I'm gonna put it together. And you can feel that Venturi tube line up with the other one. And that all, if everything's lined up, it'll sit nice and flat. So go ahead and put our screws in. So here's the carburetor, it's all uh, assembled. So I did end up changing the plug in the bottom for this, uh, I think they call it like a silcock drain. So it's just kind of a quick drain to be able to drain the gas out of the carburetor if you want to. Now the jets, both of the jets, what I did is I adjusted those by turning them all the way in and then backing them out one full turn. And that's where we're supposed to start at. So hopefully this is gonna work. Moment of truth. I got the uh, battery charger on boost, got the fuel on, I think I got everything put back together right, so let's cross our fingers. Well, well it didn't want to start, go figure. Um, I think I will let it charge for a little bit longer, that way I have just a little bit better um, so it rolls the engine a little bit better. It is sluggish trying to start it up. Um, it's actually not too cold today. It's like 40 degrees. So let me give it a little bit of time charging the battery and I'll give it another shot. But uh, so far, as far as the carburetor's concerned, I got it, you know, I got the intake opened up on it and I'm not seeing any gas leaking out or anything like that. So hopefully the carburetor's all right. The bad thing is, is I did so many things all at once to this tractor. So now it's gonna be like, so where's my real problem at? So, I don't know. We'll give it a few minutes, we'll try again. So I haven't been able to get the tractor to start and it doesn't seem like I have any spark in the ignition. And I've tested it many ways and I've tried to test it straight out of the coil and I'm still not getting you know, any spark. So my assumption right now is that the coil on the tractor is bad. Uh, so I went to Napa, just went to the local Napa store and I had them do a search and they found a coil that is supposed to be a replacement. So I'm gonna 
put this coil on the tractor and then I'm, hope, I'm hoping that it's finally going to fire up and run. No luck. So I think I found out what my problem is on why I don't have any spark. So I just replaced the points in the tractor. That's what this is. The points is basically like a little switch. And um, what was happening was when this was closing, it still wasn't letting electricity through. I took an ohm meter and tested it and it didn't have a, a good contact in here. Um, it appeared that on these contacts, there's actually something on top of them. I don't know, but I polished the end of each one of these contacts with a diamond file. So now when these two contacts come together and touch, they're actually flowing electricity now. So I think that's gonna get my spark back. So now I just gotta put these points back in the tractor and get them set. So we got the ignition. Uh, we know it's sparking now in the tractor, so that's good. So I'm feeling a little bit more confident that maybe it'll start this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot. All right, got the tractor running again. So while I was troubleshooting all those electrical parts, I did swap out some of the old parts. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the new distributor cap and rotor back on and see if it runs with the new parts. But just during that whole troubleshooting process, I ended up, since some of the parts were slightly different looking, I went ahead and just kind of swapped them out just to make sure that wasn't a problem. But it turns out the new points that I put on there must have had some kind of coating on the point and that they needed to be polished for that to get good contact and uh, close that electrical circuit. Um, maybe that's something you always have to do with points. I don't know. This is the first time I've changed out points. So maybe that's a rookie mistake. Maybe that's something you always need to do. But um, I think that was really kind of the whole problem. Um, I do think the carburetor did need rebuilt because it was overflowing with gasoline. Um, prior when we had trouble with it. So I didn't think either the float was sticking or the float valve wasn't working very well. So I do think that I did need to rebuild the carburetor. Probably put a lot more parts in this thing than I actually needed to by the time it's over with. Um, I'm not sure how much we ended up spending on this thing so far. Getting close to probably $200 in parts, just trying to get this thing and running. You know, of course, part of that is I ended up buying like probably a $30, $40, rebuild kit for a carburetor that wasn't even mine. So that's just a mistake right there. So anyway, swap these other parts out and try it one more time. All right. All right. Well, I think I'm pretty happy that the tractor's finally running. It has been probably four weeks now um, that the tractor hasn't ran and I've probably been out here at least three to four times working on this tractor and I am ready for this to be done with. So the bad thing is is today actually is raining outside right now so I can't get out there and do a couple of the things that I want to do with the tractor but at least it's running. So I'm not really sure how well this video actually probably turned out. It's really small parts with the carburetor and then really tight locations trying to work around a loader but uh, when it's all done and said, this was very frustrating trying to fix the tractor and I'm glad that it's over with. And hopefully I can move on to other pieces of equipment that might need worked on like our hay equipment and hopefully we can start getting some projects done around here. So thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video.